Extract Eva to the Tomcat Web Apps folder. Inside Eva, you'll find a security jar which contains the applet for key exchange and other normal files. Eva classes are stored in classes folder and the text folder contains text files to help on generating page content. Eva adopts the MVC model. Models are packaged under beans and controllers are packaged under controllers. The config package contains configuration of Eva. The helpers package contains classes which are used throughout Eva. Developers should check out the Eva config properties before starting the application. Developers should probably want to set the log level, the path log, and the DB property. Shared variable names at different scope of the application can also be found here. Let's start to build the first servlet. Following the MVC model, package the first controller under controller. Import Eva's call controller Eva. All controllers should extend Eva controller to enjoy the functionalities of Eva. A tip for developers override the init method to customize inherited member variables for each page. Log on to Eva's backend page, default login is admin at eva.com, password admin. Check that there is currently no content table for the home page we have created. Provide a page name for our servlet. Call the doPost method of Eva. Compile the class and restart Tomcat server. Add servlet mapping for our servlet. Load the home page one. Go back to the backend page, check that a table for home has been created. The table is currently empty. Now forward the request to a view. Input Eva's text directory in the view. Call a message text with a key. Recompile our servlet and restart Tomcat server. Reload the home page at the browser to check that the message tag is in the back. Go back to the backend page again to check that task has been created for the home page. Set the content for the newly created CU. Reload the home page to check our input. Use the set as key parameter in the message tag to set the content as a request attribute instead of printing out directly.
Reload the page to check that the content was indeed set as a request attribute. We can also reference contents from other pages using the message tag. Let's try to reference the header contents of the backend contents page. Set the page parameter as backend contents and key as header contents. The CMS supports multi languages. Enable or disable languages in the languages page. Use the Lang Choices tag to display a drop down box for switching language. Remember to set the response content type to UTF 8. Create two tables named TestMod and TestMod1. Study the schema carefully. Set the model names variable as the two tables. Test mode 1 is renamed as blah. Call the save methods of either to save form data into this table. We compile the searchlet and restart Tomcat. Create a form in the test page with input fields named like model name dot index dot field. Index is zero by default. Submit the form and check that data was indeed saved. Now copy the form and rename the fields with index 1. Submit both sets of data in one form and check that two entities were saved into the database. So far, we have only been updating Blalet's update test mode at the same time.
Submit the forms and check that both tables were updated at the same time. We come to form validation finally. Import the rule helper. Keep in mind that we are saving test mode and blah with one call to save. We create a rule that will check if the form value is between 0 and 50 and set the rule against ID of blah by calling set rule. Call the validate method. We compile the servlet and resub Tomcat. Create validation error out using the form error tag. Provide the model name, field name, index is 0 by default. Violate the rule set to ID of blah. Submit the form, the error message we said previously is shown. Since we are saving both models in one call, check the database that none of the fields were committed due to the rule violation. You might have noticed that the form became blank after submission. To repopulate the form, use the print.js tag. Submit the form again to see that form values are repopulated. Developers can also initialize form fields by setting data to a model. We use DB Helper to get data from table test mode and call the setData method to initialize model test mode. Reload the page and compare the data in the form with the data in the database. To create a user, use the registration interface provided by Eva. Eva hashes passwords with random sort using SHA-256. Now go to the login page to verify that the user has been created. Successfully redirected to the user profile page. To force user login, set the login needed variable to true. Now reload the home page, user is redirected to the login page. Home page is accessible after login. Log into the backend system and set the user as a moderator. Specify the user groups allowed to fill the page with the allowed groups variable. Here we set the groups to admin and moderator. The user being a moderator can fill the home page. Try to change the user group to a member. The user cannot view the home page anymore and is redirected to the user profile page. Eva also provides session data encryption. Eva uses an AirPlex to perform the vehemency exchange between the client and the server. Use the encrypt fields tag to indicate the fields to be encrypted. This tag must be used before PrintJS tag. There's no apparent change in the form, but Firebug reveals that a hidden field was added. Try breaking the style attribute to reveal the encrypted field. Monitor the data traffic to check that the encrypted field was sent instead of the plain text. Data is decrypted before it is saved in the database. To encrypt data sent from server to client, use the encrypt method. 
Let's encrypt ID and field 3. We compile and restart Tomcat. Let's add test mode which has ID and field 3 back to the form. The form appears to be normal. Let's try Firebug. The encrypted fields are revealed. 